Hey guys, welcome back to Max Call Stone of War Unification. Today I have a 2v2 for you on Saint Square. We have Square 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 as Chaos Demons with his ally, Square 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 as Tyranids playing against Wildcard as Sisters of Battle and his friend Square 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 as Elder. And I'm not alone here, I have my friend and colleague Mr. Landshark. Say hello. Hello there, I was going to say, speaking of squares, there's a, there's a square right here talking to you exactly as the game begins. <laughs> so, this is going to be fun, our first 2v2 cast together. Uh, right, exactly, well, like, like we were saying before the game, um, we're, we're literally making Dawn of War unification history here. <laughs> so, this, this map as well, it's like, uh, rush distance is like 2 meters, so there's bound to be action going on. Um, I'm not sure if I'm. Did we talk about the openers real quick? Like it's two gene stealers into uh, brute lord into tyrannicus brute spire for the tyranids. We have two furies into screamers into uh, dreaming lord for the chaos demons. We have two guardians. At least I hope it's two guardians and not just one. I'm seeing here for the elder, and we have no whites and Spis battle sisters for the sisters of battle and the cunners on the way. So apart from yes. the Sorry. Uh, also, I was just going to say that um, I imagine that with the Tyranids and the Chaos Demons having lots of opportunities to be early and aggressive, I imagine that the Eldar and the Sisters are probably going to hold off a little bit and try and play a bit more of a defensive game as these Chaos Demons, or oh, sorry, these Chaos Furies move into the Eldar base here. Yeah, and, and from the openers, I can tell that uh, the, the Eldar got, got, uh, were going for the weakest opener, probably maybe a newer player or what because he got for a generator aspect and then only one dark reaper and no like one guardian and one dark reaper so what what is he going for it's like a little weird to me at least but yeah no 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 shame we all began somewhere that's it i'm sure that when the uh, clash of casters drop <laughs> you will see that that the, the uh, difference between a person who knows what to do in the game versus um a person who has no idea what they're doing in any way, shape, or form. Anyway, here we go. We've got a, a Broodlord maneuvering in. We do have Furies and some, what do you call them, some Screamers going yeah. at these uh, Dark Reapers like no man's business. Haven't quite got Fleet of Foot yet, so they're just going to have to hobble on on their normal Eldari legs. Yeah, there, there you can see the weakness of the opener. You have like no units, no Fleet of Foot. Uh, yeah, and yeah, wow, these Dark Reapers get <laughs> the short end of this fighting stick here, like the fight club going on. But yeah, the, the Furies uh, lost their morale at least one spot, but yeah, Dark Reapers going down. That's expensive. That's it. That's not what you want to spend in the early games. But this Listening Shrine ha has been upgraded, which will show away all these Chaos Furies breaking all the morale. And now that the Chaos Furies have turned their attention to the Burn Singers, the Dark Reapers were able to turn around. So, uh, sorry, Burn Singers teleporting away, and now we have got a whole smorgasbord of Novitiate sister squads and regular old battle sisters moving in for defensive purposes, led in by their cannoness. So this Brood Lord and Demon Lord are going to be in a bit of a troubling. Oh dear, oh dear, that flaming sword knocked all those sisters on the backside there. Yeah, I mean, they, they. I thought they were in a bit of trouble because there were a lot of guys shooting at them, but these. The, the Demon Lord was like, yeah, whatever, but now they, they focus down the Brood Lord and the Brood Lord will go down in a second. He tried to attack the HQ for whatever reason, but yeah, um, he he probably wanted to at least try out his four arms here. But oh, there we have some, tur um, what are they called again, Reveners and some Screamers going back in. So this was planned all along. Let's see how this goes. Oh God, it's, it's, it's a massacre. We've got demons from one end, space bugs from the other. Dark Reapers trying to hold line. We've now got a second squad of Dark Reapers, and they have got their fleet of foot, so we'll be able to at least, at the very least, outrun these screamers. But these sisters are going to be in a world of hurt for the remainder of their run home. Yeah, they're all gone running. Eldar running, Sister of Battle running, all the melee superiority we have on the other side. The listening posts are upgrading, but they, you need to, to fight off the reservoirs, or your listening posts will not be ready upgraded. So this is like. <laughs> completely in the in the elder base all all along i don't see much action around the map uh, other than that so we focus on this one we saw a spore mine dropped in on the top side another spore mine coming in as well 
Exploding against the HQ maybe? Does it explode against buildings? I don't think so. The listening shrine actually survived until now upgrading so it will fire oh. ray as well. So did they kind of hold it again? Oh man, those reavers just jumping up from underneath the Dark Reapers, sending them sky high, but they do manage to defend. Now, from in, from a 2v2 perspective, you don't necessarily need to destroy someone else's base. If In a 2v2, if you can get at least one of the enemy team so far behind the economy that they can't keep up, then you've got that advantage for the rest of the game. I mean, two versus one is very difficult odds indeed to overcome. Yeah, and we have to actually also talking about a, a little misplays. We have the standard Tyranid uh, misplay. It only has like plus uh, 35 income because he forgot all about the reclamation pools. He just dropped six in right now in a <laughs> like at once because he was so focused on fighting. So that kind of makes up for the the economy loss of the elder because the Tyranids didn't have any eco as well. So this uh, could be still. Uh, how should I say? Uh, uh, interesting game. Tier 2 was on the way for Sisters of Battle and Chaos Demons, but uh, yeah, Tyranids and Elder will be uh, stuck in Tier 1 for a bit longer. That's it, and my goodness, these, these Raveners, just look at the size of them compared <laughs> to a regular Sisters model. Like, I mean, these, guys, these, these ladies are slashing left and right, but against the hard outer carapace of these Raveners, not much they can do. They have gone for some flamers, which would be ideal against um, the demons at the very least. Possibly even the Raveners. I mean, if you break them around, then they're less effective and all that. But there's just so many. It's just This Eldar player must be stressing out like no man's business right now. I mean, he does the right thing. He upgrades his listening post. He probably, uh, if he would have been able to build a, uh, what do you call it again? A support portal, a support platform or whatever the turrets are called. This would be... A, absolute uh, welcome but yeah give, getting this up with with all this fighting going on it's a hard way but a lot a lot of revenants going down these things do not have a lot of health they lost their morale because they have no brute lord or any synapse creature in the vicinity tier two now on the way for turrets a little late on that but yeah elder is uh, how is the economy for elder Give me a second. Oh yeah, just plus 80. Plus 80 isn't isn't really uh, bad for what the situation he is into, I have to say. Well and that's it, considering that the um, Tyranids are at plus um, 98, it's... I mean, don't get me wrong, the Tyranids don't use green money all that much, but... Oh sorry, it's not, sorry, it's not there. They're at plus 76, so uh, even though they don't use much green money, it's still not, still not an amazing economy for someone who's been on top for so long in this game. Yeah, and we have now also Farsia Maka joining the fray, so it's a new Farsia. We don't see her often because she's uh, more or less melee focused. Some Inferno grenades or whatever they're called, and some Spore Mines dropping in, so this is going to be a beautiful fight here. Again in the Elder Base, of course, where there is no other map here, it's only the Elder Base. A lot of the Flamers of Siege coming in, they will flame the Sisters also, so Flames left, Flames right, Farsia Maka joining in in melee as well, so wow. Oh, those flamers just kind of spawned and then died straight away. And and the Farsi was like chasing those guys all the way back up. Do manage to kill a guardian on the way out, but God, this defense is epic. Th these guys are doing a really good job at keeping all the demons and Tyranids at bay. Yeah, I mean they have a lot of uh, infantry to chew on. Uh, maybe a little more, how should I say, strategic uh, thingy like I don't know having one squad attacking the more or less undefended system of battle base or something would be really nice but yeah let's see what is going more revenues because yeah revenues are fun i guess um carnifex chamber dropped xenotype brute worm dropped but no sanoprobes yet or bio wars okay let's see there's uh, bio wars would be awesome because there's a lot the artillery we have an attack on the chaos demons base this time so another squad of flamers but these are now Supported flamers by Revenus. But more, uh, more, uh, more flaming grenades. <laughs> How much grenades <laughs> do you have? Jesus. <laughs> there we go. Even more Revenus coming in. And these flamers were really difficult to deal with. The Revenus on the front lines. Killing quite a lot of the sisters. But bearing in mind that those sisters were also contending with spore mines on top of that as well. Do have an Eldari attack on the more northern side of the Chaos Demons 
the base. Yeah. Uh, I mean, God, yeah, that 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 farce here is is quite lethal. She's bringing out all the shiny electro stuff as she engages in close melee combat. Yeah, she has like a similar to the Psy Storm of the uh, less standard um, Farsi. Yeah, she has uh, one that uh, goes completely around her, you could say, like an AoE around herself. She's more melee specialist, as I say, <laughs> going toe to toe with Ravenous here that was just standing there and chilling, I guess. <laughs> more flamers in the background uh, on the other side of the fence. <laughs> this <It's>, is. <laughs> she, she holds no fear. She does not fear the, um, the Tyranids. And some of her attack animations are really good. Like, there was one sink kill where she just jumped on top of a Ravana and just stabbed it. It was great. Yeah, now, now she got uh, a little, little hot around her, but these are more or less against infantry. But still, they're still packing a punch against commanders. Holy shit. But these oh, are like yeah. two squads of flamers fully reinforced. They are really good against infantry. That's what you want about them. Yeah, so is there a tier 2 on the way for... A tier 2 already done for Elder now. Where is it? Ah, it's on the, on the right hand side, not in their base, yeah, which is, which is <laughs> smart. Um, I was going to say, at this point, if you're an Eldar player in, in this kind of game, you just build all your buildings inside the sister's base, because that's clearly where it's the safest. I mean, the sister's player has got all three listing posts upgraded, got a nice spread of generators in the center, with a Magnifactorum now coming out with an Immolator. So that'd be really good to fight back this horde of Xenos and mm -hmm. warp entities alike. Yeah, and oh, sadly the support portal got uh, uh, killed or at least ca cancelled. I was hoping for some Eldar um, vehicles here to break um, this everlasting assault here. The Flamers are still here, but they lost their morale. They need to have a, uh, a soul or something, a hero, something next to them, but you see them, if they have no morale, they break easily, they <laughs> took down the, the listening post nevertheless, but yeah, they will lose a lot of models in their retreat, I'm I'm sure. Indeed. But four mines uh, dropping in, saving saving the day, I guess. Poof! That's it. Sisters need to pull back now and focus on these Raveners that are taking care of the Aspect Portal, although they do kind of turn their attention away, thinking, hmm, there's probably better targets like this listing person that's been shoot shooting at us for about half an hour. But yeah, if, if the sisters or the uh, Eldar could just get a couple of vehicles on the field, it will really ruin the uh, Tyranids and Chaos composition, because at the moment they don't have anything all that useful against um, uh, vehicles. Yeah, apart from the, 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 the Pink Horrors, of course, but yeah, this is only one squad of Pink Horrors. So yeah, this can be dealt with. We have now a Tier 2 Rangers being added. <laughs> Uh, <coughs> but it's a nice choice because they do like a hell of a lot of morale damage. It's exactly what you want against these demons. The Wiper um, add-on is there and there's the emulator dropping. Let's see how this flamey thingy does. But there's a lot of horrors! Come on, kill the horrors, kill the horrors. Focus fire, young man, focus oh. fire. You can, well, young lady, sorry. Oh no. See, again, that's the one complaint I have with the emulator. Amazing against infantry and demons and all that jazz. But you need to get really close with them. Yeah, so, poof, emulator, what else could you go for? Yeah, let's say a lightning fighter jet into the enemy base, yeah? It's like, you do not need to face the army directly. You can sometimes attack the enemy base. Let's say a lightning fighter jet in this, um, I'm looking at it, a reclamation pool farm on the left would be disaster for the economy for the turrets. But okay, some bio war fire I saw coming Ooh. into bio wars, the limited is uh, two. So they're, they're gonna be like a real good support if they cannot be dealt with uh, now that will be an absolute nuisance, I can tell you. There we go, the Tyranid is laying siege on the Eldari base, has not seen a moment of respite or peace in this entire game. We do have uh, Farsi and Maka rejoining, or Masha, however one wants to pronounce that, rejoining the fray, just basically engaging in, in melee, screening all these demons back, going for those Bioball, she is not messing around. She wants to get up close and personal, but then dying sadly. Right yeah. there. She goes what he what he wanted for. <laughs> yeah, but you need <laughs> yeah, it's, you need to deal with this bio wars uh, one way or the other. But they are kind of well defended. Um, they are good against infantry and good against buildings if they go for the bio acid spore mine upgrade. Vehicles they are not very good against. So uh, that's something you could try and deal with it. Um, we have now a Nightwing, and what? where is it going? Is it actually going to the base? Oh, it's getting intercepted! Oh, no! Oh, it was the perfect plan, but 
just at the wrong time executed. So those vipers, you could have just moved those vipers to li literally anywhere other than the front lines. Yeah, and but he's doing what I was suggesting, going for the reclamation pools, but there, Sanoprobe's dropping <laughs> out. And oh no, that was just the worst timing possible. Yeah, but he he's on 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 his toes trying to kill uh, the economy. These warp signatures also provide economy for the for the um, chaos demon. So yeah, they they kind of uh, doing as I suggested, mixing up the uh, fields of fire, fields of uh, combat. Now we have an assault at the um, since of battle base, and it's not well defended. A lot of generators up on the front side. Um, yeah, the bases are really small, so I was like saying maybe not the best placement, but yeah, there's no much space else to put them. We have some Celestians. Celestians is the very best answer you can get against these kind of melee focused uh, attacks early on because they do not uh, fear melee combat at all. But the Nightwing was trying something, but yeah, did go down in the end. For anything, just to give the sisters a chance to reposition. But the moment that these sisters started coming over, they thought, ah, oh, no, sisters far too well defended. Much prefer attacking the Eldar. And speaking of Eldar, they've got a Viper now chasing after these Biovars that are scuttling away as quickly. They're, I'm surprised with their speed. They're, they're remark for artillery units. They're remarkably quick. Sorry, I had to do something for my voice. We were casting like for hours straight here. <coughs> Sorry, um, say, we've, we've, we've had a good go at it tonight, haven't we? I mean, this is probably the most we've ever casted in our entire lives. Well, entire uh, co-casting live, shall we say? Yeah, which is uh, how long? <laughs> but yeah, uh, <laughs> my voice it's not is kind of. We've only done one game each <laughs> in the past, but. Uh, so uh, I, I apologize I, uh, for all the coughing that will come now. But the Rangers are here killing some Ravenous. <coughs> Again, in the Elder base, they lose morale as they as they ought to. Viper standing strong for now. Um, should be able to deal with these, yeah, taking minimal damage against these bio wars. On the center we have still these two squads of flamers, a lot of horrors. There's the Herald of Siege, we know him. He is like also like a really good uh, unit as well. We have tier 3 done for Sisters. They have a casting guard. We have tier 3 done for Elder. We have tier 3 um, not done for Chaos Demons, but for the Eternals. So almost all have tier 3 now, so maybe we'll see, we'll see some more big tanks and whatnot. Uh, holy Riley Crow getting built, probably some heroes. But yeah, let's see how this Castle Core is doing. Really good yeah, for we'll now. Ah. Yeah, we've, we've, got a, we've got a big engagement in the middle, but I must say, I'm, I'm very impressed with the ability for the Eldar player to keep still relevant in the game, able to destroy those Tyranids. Sisters now currently bearing the brunt with the uh, Castigator. But not able to really get a good engagement on it as it was tanking all the horror damage. Double round of transport, well, two round of transports in the back lines. But now these Retributor squads. Oh no! Holy hell, these rhinos are packed with ladies. So they're now just going to pack out and fire away. But we do have a Hive Tyrant as well as two Screamer Killer Carnifexes opening fire on all the explosions. Humanly possible. Good lord, have mercy on my soul. This is. What is even going on? It's like fire left, fire right, explosions here, explosions there. Do you have a quick name for the Hive turn? I tried to get the Intuit cast uh, thing going where every Hive turn gets a special name. Quick, before it dies. Uh, shit, one's called John, the other one is called Tim. No, uh, there's, there's only one uh, Hive turn, so it's uh, called John. Okay, John the Hive turn. It's still oh, alive. Sorry, with I thought, I thought he said Carn Effects for a second then. No, no, but the Hive turn, it's like a, a thing. He, he always gives them gives them names, so. I started there with it the other day, so we have John the Carnifex still alive, having this default weaponry with the, um, not, it's not the Rowers, but he has like ranged weaponry, he, because it, all turrets have four arms, he has two melee things and two uh, ranged things, because why not? So, wow, That's it. big damage against the uh, Sisters of Battle Base here, they, they really want to do it, but as you said, Retributioner Squad is tier 3, also a Sister Hospitaler with them, so they, they survive. They deal damage and survive. Let's see yeah, how it this goes. This looks like it's taking a beating, but they've managed to... At least, well, well, well they're about to kill the Hive Tyrant. There we go. See you later, John. We'll, we'll name the next one after something a little bit more survivable. St. John was not known for his ability to stay alive. <laughs> Does some Wraith Guard from the Eldar coming out, which is yes. quite exciting. I, I just Very good against demons, heavy infantry, all the good stuff. So if they're able to keep them alive, should be all right. 
Yeah, because they also count as heavy infantry, not as vehicles, so they can deal with the horrors, kind of, but yeah, they were outmatched. But I noticed just that the uh, Elder, <laughs> being on the back foot for all the game, are tier 4 now. So, holy shit. Jesus, that, that, I must say, that, that is a, it's a real skill to be able to play to a high level when you're on the back foot, especially when you've got to, when, when you were being under constant assault all the way through the game. So hats off to the Eldar player in this game here. Yeah, and now it's, uh, they, they decided that the Elder base is not worth fighting anymore. They're now again laying siege on the uh, Sister of Battle base. <laughs> they do not know that uh, Elder is tier 4, of course, so they he can go for uh, Avatar. Right, let's go. This is going to be fun. Avatar. Oh, scene. yes, a surprise Avatar from the player you thought's already been defeated. Yeah, it's this like, will be exciting to see. Yeah, it's like, yeah, the Elder Gear player is dead, he can't do anything, and then s suddenly Avatar on the right side, you know, it's, it's gonna be fun. Um, yeah, still holding on, we have some Warp Spiders. Warp Spiders very good against anything uh, on the field, against uh, all the infantry on the world. Not doing a lot of damage against this Carnifex, because the Carnifex has Demon uh, Armor High, so it will tank for days. That's it. It's quite difficult to take care of the Carnifex. You would normally... If you play against any other faction, you'd go for anti-vehicle weapons, but not many factions have great anti-demon weaponry. Awesome Flamers deep strike from the back, trying to roast these warp spiders, but these warp spiders are deadly themselves as well. But yeah, the plan goes goes <coughs> as planned. You could say the screamers, uh, screamers. I would say that the flamers were dropped behind the warp spiders, roasting them. Yeah, all the kicks in the world will not save you against these revenants. Uh, I'm afraid. Well, R.I.P. Warp Spiders, and it does look like you know, this is the death knell for the Sisters player. I mean, he is going to go for another Castigator. We do have a whole Rhino full of Retributor squads. We're opening fire, absolutely massacring the Herald of Zinch, stopping his wicked Warp nonsense. But is it enough? Oh, never mind. It will be enough because we've got an Avatar. Yeah, we'll Sleek Slender Dawn of War 2 model just maneuvering ever so elegantly towards this Carnifex here. Yeah, they all tell, tell you that there's only a beautiful woman asses in unification, but look at his slender butt moving into this battle here, trying to kill everything. He has also a Wraith Knight now coming in, uh, not to mix with the Harlequin Wraith Knight, Mr. Lanchark voice for the upcoming update. Haha! <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. So, but yeah. I, I wanted to make a comment about the Avatar's backside, but I didn't want to lower the turn of the cast. But yes, he, his bum is a, it's just like sculpted from marble, shall <laughs> we say. But yeah, yeah. We, we've got the Eldar player bringing out all the big toys. This is going to be a really difficult thing for the Chaos Demons and the Tyranids to deal with. Yeah, I mean, uh, they killed uh, the Sister of Battle HQ, so they are back at the Stone Age, I have to say. But they still have the Rhino full of Retributor squad, so... They, they, they at least have that, and you can see them mincing these warrior squads, Jesus. So, we have now some retributors uh, of the uh, sisters and some big units from the elder, so this is gonna be fun. We have also a deceiver of Siege, so it's a Siege build from the Chaos Demons. This deceiver is really good, it also has like something to uh, disorientate infantry and what nonsense, but yeah, it's a... I'm not thinking it can deal with a Wraith Knight, can it? I, I, I don't think it can. I think, I mean, I mean, just look how quickly it moves. Like, yeah. this dude is not messing around anytime soon. His health pool is just insane. And I imagine get three Burn Singers on that to re-repair. One of the advantages about having a vehicle is that you don't need to wait for a long time on health regen. You can just kind of mosey on him back to the base. And it'll be right as rain in a couple of minutes. Yeah, but a lot of horror squads, uh, all the limit of three horror squads are now outside and they, they focus fire. They do uh, deal some damage, but there are so also some warp spiders coming in to, to have a saying with that. Castigore is still alive, uh, trying to support us. This is now the first time ever in the enemy base, huh. not in the base for the Sisters of Battle or Elder. So, and Chaos Demons are not known for their defensive capabilities, so I can only imagine this going south really quick. Certainly so. I mean, realistically, what have they got at the moment? They're not building anything mage from any of their um, uh, buildings, unless the Terminator player's got anything special coming. They've got another Carnifex. Uh, has gone for a Tyragon Warren, so potential for 
a big unit there, but by the time that Tyrogon Warren is finished and then the Tyrogon comes out, this curve's basically going to go. I mean, I have to say the uh, the uh, race knight got dealt with, but you still have the avatar standing here, strong in his fairy beauty he is. But yeah, there's not much left on the uh, Chaos base. There's still a crater demon uh, uh, portal getting another deceiver of Siege, but the HQ will be dying soon. We have another Carnifex going from the backside, trying to kill this Castigo, but this Castigo will surely move away. And I, I have to say, these Retributors in this uh, the Rhino transport are the saving grace for the Sister of Battle team here yeah, because they are dealing so much damage against anything the uh, um, turn player can field. Oh, definitely. Like, it, it's, it's. I mean, they, they have rebuilt the Ecclesiarchal Chapel down on the um, other side of the map, but they've got all they need at this point. They, they're providing the, the a wonderful amount of long range support for this avatar to go on, and he's still got so much health left like he's it's probably the one of the one of the only times i've ever seen avatar being super useful in a game yeah regardless of the mod yeah right normally it's like avatar is just coming out and dying in a second or two because yeah he is he is you could think of it more as uh, support uh, elder unit as it gives so many buffs to the elder units like making them morale damage immune uh, increasing their building speed increasing their uh, caps and whatnot yeah, but I want to see this Trigon. Where is it? Is it done already? No, well, I don't guys, see it. I mean, I mean, if if even Matt Ward can't can't defeat this avatar in this mod, then surely Tyragon can't. But um, we are having some back and forth from the players here. I assume it's all friendly and lovely. <laughs> but yeah, man, this this Eldar player. You know, I know that we were a bit suspicious about his build order at the beginning, but just the resilience. It's a skill that you can't learn. It's a skill that you've got to. And as you play these games, and he was able to hold on, keep building up his resources, get to that tier four, and get his huge relic units out that changed the face of this battle forever. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can blame his uh, the, the early disadvantage uh, on him because he had a weak build order. But yeah, as you said, he was resilient, not a guy who just leaves because he thinks, oh, I got behind, we will lose. He, g <laughs> I have no idea how he got the resources for it, but he tacked up to tier four. Uh, and yeah, and and won the game actually, uh, you could say. But yeah, no, no, uh, nothing to uh, get uh, away from the other players. The the Sith of Battle defeated uh, the attacks on the Elder Base in the early game very well. But also on the other side, really well managed attacks as well. It's not easy to maintain a constant pressure for that long. So um, and you can see what happens if you cannot continue the pressure. So yeah, very very nice game indeed. Uh, yeah, so as we see the, the last remnants of the uh, Tyranid base being absolutely uh, smacked apart, um, you are the most influential Dawn of War unification uh, caster there is, but still, do you want to plug the channel? I wouldn't say the most influential, I just, I have, a, I have the biggest upload schedule because I've got no social life. But uh, th thank you ever so much for the kind words. But yeah, I've got my own YouTube channel where we do Dawn of War unification. Um, basically all the Dawn of War you could ever possibly want in your life. It's it's there. We do vanilla. We do all of Apocalypse. We do pro when there are games available to cast. But can I just say as well that tonight, the the games that we've casted tonight, both your one that's going on your channel, the one that's going on my channel, I think they've been, they've been some of the most exciting unification games I have seen uh, since since casting. This has been so much fun this night, sir. Thank you ever so much for having me. Yeah, I think it's uh, it has to do with the more influx of... Uh the uh, vanilla play coming over all these uh, Russian players here I think aren't uh, played unification for that long they are I, I think most for the most part uh, vanilla players so they bring their vanilla skill set to unification so it is very much appreciated um, yeah well with this I would say we will end this lovely cocas and yeah thanks again for being here and as the usual thanks guys for watching and see you in the next video peace